Welcome to the Metal Lifestyle Magazine Show. I'm your host, Karina Felix. Join me each week on this exciting new magazine TV platform as I bring in guests that will discuss everything from spiritual growth, personal awareness, and business success. Join us as we share our journeys and inspire you to live a meaningful life, serve a higher purpose, and make a global impact. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to this fabulous Tuesday afternoon with the Meta Lifestyle Magazine show, the source for enhancing, impacting, and transforming lifestyles. And as you could see, <laughs> we were all laughing because the fun part about today's show is that I've decided to invite the millennials. So that age group between 19 and 27, 28, and uh, their journey is so different to what we had to go through back in our days. And I thought it would be interesting to bring in a group of this, of this age and ask them a couple of questions and kind of compare and see how things used to be, how things are, and what they are doing now, especially after COVID, and they're now living a very different lifestyle than we did back in our days. So that's why um, today I get to introduce to you my son, Sergio Fideli. Say hi, Sergio. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> How are you today, Mom? Mom is very, very excited that you came and joined me and support me. So, you know, sometimes this is all we want to just to know that our kids can join us and support us. And, you know, we've been on this journey for a long time. I used to be our I don't know if I could say used to, but I was a helicopter mom, which they now call a drone mom, but I have tried to step back and give them a space to grow. How is that going? <laughs> 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 no, growing, uh, definitely I have been doing. I mean, that's what this, uh, this age is about, the 20s, it's all about 
just you know making uh, making your mistakes even and and getting your experience and growing and learning from that. So well, we are going. Yeah, it was well, it was nice to have you there though, growing up all the time. It was nice. Twenty four seven. I'm <laughs> gone. I'm still here. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> Well, the, 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 the interesting thing is um, that's very difficult for us as parents is, you know, we do want the best for our kids. And because of that, sometimes we kind of go a bit too far. And it's, it's very hard to step back and watch them. And sometimes they have to go through hardship. Sometimes they have to go through that moment, whatever that is, you know, this is the, the age they're falling in love and getting their hearts broken. and and you know friendships that doesn't work anymore and it's this is all very new to them and just for them to navigate it and how we as parents could be there to support them so you know how how you know how do, what do you think what's happening with your friends in this group i know you have a lot of friends that you have been close well to. today i brought a couple friends you saw earlier uh, one of my friends being the uh, hype man for the introduction. Very good. Thank you, Dylan. <laughs> uh, it's very funny, yeah. And uh, he's got his own brand he's starting that we're going to see that in a little bit. And I brought another f uh, close friend that we actually were roommates in college together. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's got his own brand that we're going to see also very soon. So the interesting thing is um, being the drone mom that I was gave me an opportunity to be not only with my kids, but I spend a lot of time with the friends and this friends spend a lot of time in my home. So I know a lot of these kids since middle school because I was also the substitute teacher. So I see them grow up. These kids that were here, they're all oh, up yeah. here now, way taller, bigger. But it's fun to see how they've all gone in different directions. And just from his close friends, we have some of them becoming doctors and nurses and entrepreneurs and traveling. And it's just see how diverse that they are. They're so much braver to go out there on their own. And um, I'm, of course, I'm not going to move on without bringing in my co-host, Miss Nadini. Please go ahead. Hi. And Hi everyone. Um, I'm so excited today to have the millennials here joining us, giving giving us their perspective on what society is expecting of them, what they expect of society, what they expect of the world, what they expect of themselves, how are they growing, how are they adapting. And I think a key point to bring out today is how they see our generation, how we see them, what are the differences, what are the similarities, and how we can support each other and how we can grow together um you know when uh, the song <laughs> when when you know that was just thrown together at the last minute um and i just thought it was just what this generation is about they're up for anything you know um they were there supporting the singer and it was just a delight to see so thank you dylan um, <laughs> so i'm looking really looking forward to hearing what uh, these young folk have to share with us today. Okay, so I'm gonna let Sergio go ahead because you know he knows his people a little better than me. So we were going to start. Like who, sh who should we start with today? Yeah, let's start with Alex. You got him let's here. Start right? with Alex. Hi guys, my name is Alex. So tell us what you do, Alex. Um, so so in. I went to the University of Florida and I graduated with my business degree a few years ago. Um, and since then, I, when I finished school, I, I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, I think people think, oh, business degree, and then it's like, oh, okay, so you're going to go work for a company. But business is very general. There's different things to do, and I didn't have, like, a specific thing that I liked. Um, so I just, I just kind of floated around for a little bit. Uh, my dad opened up a restaurant right when I got out of school, so I started doing that, and I helped him grow that. Um, and then once that kind of you know blossomed into what it is now and it, it's going I, I moved on and um, I started a tutoring company with my brother so um, we have a brand it's called I fix grades um, and it just the idea was was his it just came because essentially that, that that's kind of what we do um, 
whether it's you know if, if you're if your child is struggling in a specific subject um we get a lot of it not because the the kid doesn't isn't smart or anything like that but during covid you know it was two years where mm -hmm. kids were all online mm -hmm. and you know when i was in school like cheating was a big thing but <laughs> not the way it Especially is now online yeah right. <laughs> so you know sometimes you know the class is too hard the teacher isn't great we got too much stuff going on right but now kids have so many websites and so many different things on the internet and during COVID, a lot of these kids just kind of went through the motions found answers online and now that they're back in school you know they're a year behind they're two years behind and their, their grades reflected that um so for us we've been able to just kind of help these kids catch up um but a positive thing with COVID was a lot of the stuff that a lot of the programs and stuff that came out during that time um, were virtual friendly. So we've been able to adapt and, and we have clients all over the world. We have clients in South Africa. Um, wow. We have clients in Slovenia, California, New York, Tennessee, clients here, local, you know, Palm Beach County and stuff like that. And we have a lot of tools um, that we're able to use virtual whiteboards, um, Skype, Google Meets, Zoom like that, things like that. And we, we've been able to help kids and, and you know, that, that's, that's kind of like where we found that we're able to bring value to people and, and we're trying to build that brand up, you know. Um, a big thing that kind of has worked for us is because we're younger, we're a little bit closer to the generation of the kids that we work with. Right. So it's not like they're working with a teacher and they, oh, they have to do this, right? It's more like they're working with someone that they get along with and they're helping them learn and, and figure stuff out and, and just let them get caught back up. You know, those two years, they definitely hurt kids a lot. So yeah. that's, that's just kind of where we're working at and where we're trying to grow. That's great because that reminded me back when we were in middle school and um, uh, for just the kids that know me from back then, we uh, as PTO we created an after school program for the kids to go and do homework but what we did is we brought in the high school kids to come and work with the middle school kids because like you said there's a different there's that stigma of they're an adult and they don't get it it's very different because uh, maybe because you're more patient maybe because you're younger whatever that is you can relate so more. The what you can relate more you, you know? can relate more and, and you're not as strict and and you probably have more patience too right yeah, it's a combination of things um in reality because i think so like for a kid to be able to come and like tell me hey i, I watched this video on tiktok or instagram and they're like oh i watched the same video then, then it's like <laughs> okay we're hanging out but then it's like hey man we got some homework to do let's you know and then you're having a conversation and it, it's it's more enjoyable for the right. kid to be able to work in that way and that's kind of where we're focusing now, where we hire tutors. Um, a lot of our tutors are, are master's graduates. Um, they're, you know, they're going to dental school. They're going to, um, uh, was it medical, med, med, med school, law school, things like that. Um, so, you know, they're, they're really smart tutors, but they're also, you know, personable. So right. we're focusing on that because if, if the kid enjoys working with you, then it's not that difficult to get him to work and, and work. learn and, and that's learn. the goal is to get him to learn at some point you know I, I'm curious about your path after you left uh, high school and becoming an entrepreneur yourself and you said your dad had a restaurant so you know entrepreneurship is obviously in your family is that what influenced you or did you look at society at large did you look at the dynamics that were changing in the world and decided for yourself I need to be an entrepreneur rather than an employee of someone else. I think since since I was a kid, the goal was to work for myself. I, th I think as a, a child from immigrants and like coming to the U.S., I think that's what the American dream was always sold to me as coming here, getting an education and then starting my own business. Um, so the fact that my dad, you know, went out and started a restaurant and gave me the opportunity to learn through that and, and you know I learned a lot of things because the restaurant opened during COVID so we had to figure out you know the to-go systems we had to figure out how to do stuff online um, I, I made biz I made deals with local businesses for like catering things like that that stayed open like nurses and banks were still open during COVID so that you know all that all those obstacles I think helped me be a better entrepreneur and then now that I have the opportunity to work with my brother because my brother's the one that started the uh, tutoring company 
um, I'm able to apply the stuff that I learned as well as just the stuff that, you know, the difficulties that I had during COVID and just kind of like apply it to the business. Excellent, excellent. That's pretty amazing. But I could see uh, entrepreneurship is definitely in your, in your blood and, I'm, and I'm, I'm, I am like, I totally believe everyone should try to work for themselves and be entrepreneurs because then you are in control of your life, your income, whatever happens, you know, you, you have, I mean, the, the difficult part is you got to get up and you got to do it. There's no one telling you, you got to be at work nine to five. There's none of that. So, you know, you have to get up, you have to do it. And, but if you're doing something that you already love, then it's like a no brainer. It's simple. It's easy. I think for our generation too, being an entrepreneur is like what the, I don't want to say the trend or the fad, but that's like what we move towards. I think, you know, like for my parents' generation and the generations before us, it was, you know, go to college, get a good job at a good company. Mm. And that, I don't know, to me, that was never like something that clicked. It was never like, okay, that's what I want to do. You know, and I think part of it too is because we have so much access to like social media and stuff, we actually know everything that's out there. You know, it's not like, it's not like we can be happy with just a job. It becomes too monotonous. So as an entrepreneur, you have different problems every single day. You deal with different kinds of stuff every single day. So it's just constant change. And I think that's like a big thing that draws us in. That is so yeah, true. Definitely. That is so true. So. Well, <coughs> you did go to UF. What do you, and Suncoast. And uh, right. so I have to say, what, what do you think that you missed in education that could help you in the real world? What do I think, what, sorry? That our education misses that could like help you in the real world. Especially now that you're doing what you're doing, what do you think that you would have learned if they or had taught have you or what they should have taught yeah. you in school? Um, so I think school, there's a disconnect between what kids need to learn nowadays and what school teaches you. Mm. Um, you know, I have a lot of students that are like, well, why am I learning, you know, how to find the area of a square? The quadratic and, and then it's like, well, you know, I, I try to like be positive. I'd be like, well, you might, you know, want to become an architect someday. And that kind of goes to it. But that's the thing is, I think school is meant to just give you options, and just to overall. teach you a bunch of stuff that maybe you, you like it, maybe you don't. It's the only way to know is to learn it. Correct. Um, but for me, I wish school would have taught me because from the beginning, I, I knew that I wanted to run a business. I knew that I wanted to be an entrepreneur. So I wish school would have offered me more classes where I could have learned that kind of stuff. Um, I, I do a lot of tutoring and accounting and finance stuff. Right. And it's all stuff that I applied to my company. And that's like, that's the main way that I'm able to relate it and connect it to the kids is I give them those examples. Like, hey, you know, if you had your own company, right? Like you don't have to be the perfect accountant. But if you go out and hire somebody, you want to make sure that their work is right. So you need to know a little bit of accounting. Right. And then, you know, just real world examples. And, and you know, you're, you're able to learn more if you're able to relate it to something that's, that's tangible, you know. That is so true. <laughs> Definitely. That yeah. is so, so true. I'm so glad you said that. Yeah. So thank you so much, Alex. Yeah, thank you guys for having Please me. Please hang around. Don't, don't, don't leave too, too yeah, soon. Yeah, and if, you know, if, if anybody out there, you know, if, if any parent or anything has a, a kid that needs help, you know, feel free to reach out. Our website is ifixgrades.com. Just give us a call and, and we can definitely help you guys right. out. I will definitely, you, I will Alex. also have it on my website. So you'll be able to go to metalifestylemagazine.com and I will have one that says giveaway and all of the information from all of our presenters will be there so that will be at the end of the show again so next we have with us and this is going to be interesting <laughs> i hope are we ready for uh is there nick back there no we got dylan back oh, there oh we got dylan back there yeah, hold let's, on hey, let's take it to dylan hold on hi dylan hey guys how are we doing thank you for coming in today thank you for having me i heard you're quite an entrepreneur and very that, artistic yeah. right yes so very. tell us what it is that you have with us today. so right now i have this clothing company that i made a couple months ago honestly it happened because i was with my friend and i looked at him and i was like i'm bored let's start a clothing company let's just see what happens <laughs> so 
just put in a lot of work, just kind of, I had no idea what I was doing going into it. I kind of just like stayed up all night just studying and everything. And I was like, yo, this is so easy. So here it is. So tell us why you came up with that particular brand. It just kind of <laughs> came to me. Uh, I had it for a while in my head and I kind of wanted to do it later in life. And I was like, why wait? So just started it and it's been doing pretty good. I think it looks pretty nice. So, so what kind of products do you have though? What, what kind of design so, do you have? This is a mannequin, this is not a person. <laughs> I have a ski mask, pink. We also have them in black. I have a hoodie, a cute little fanny pack that just came in, hats, I have socks, and then also little socks with these cute flowers on them. <laughs> and that's it right now. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. I also have soccer shorts because I play soccer. And what better <coughs> way to uh, represent yourself with yeah. something you love? <laughs> no one bought those yet. Nobody? Okay, two people bought them. <laughs> okay, well, oh, because no, they like didn't the know you were there, now we do. So exactly. tell us, how, how, how are you funding this? Like, How did you start? Just myself. Just literally, like, I shout out to myself. I'm crushing it right now. All the money I'm making from work, I put a little money to the side, and I have that mindset where I'm like, I'm going to get it back. So what I did first is I bought these stickers, and I was like, I'm going to sell these for $5. So I sold a couple and it was kind of like my test run How to see if people would buy? like them. So mm -hmm. I made some money with the stickers and with the stickers, I bought hats. And with hats, I bought socks and it was kind of just, you know, funneling its way to the top. And then I put some of my own money in, but for the most part, it's been pretty self-sustainable. Really? That's yeah. excellent. So what about, so you, you had to find so there's a process here. You had to find he printers. Started small. You had to, to do some research to find the, 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 the clothing, the right clothing, the right yeah, material. Yeah, so I got some samples in the beginning and you kind of just, you know, you see what you like and you don't like. With the samples, they're a little more expensive because you get one or two at a time. So what I would do is people would still like them, but they weren't up to my quality. So let's say I was getting a sample for $40. I would sell it for like $35 still so it wasn't so expensive to the person and I was making some money back but I was just constantly reinvesting my money like I haven't really paid for anything like for myself yet it's just all the money just keeps going back into business so what so what future do you see for this are you gonna brand it out and as, as a your brand as your actual business business eventually yeah I'm gonna be worldwide oh yes, I love sir. that going global going global there you Let's go. go so um, <laughs> So during the day, you have a different job. Mm -hmm. So at night, I work from, I'm a server from like 5 p.m. to 1 a.m., but it kind of helps because I have all day to myself, mm -hmm. and then I have all night, like I'll go to sleep super late, and I'll wake up early. So during like when I get off work, the second I get home, I'm on like the little iPad, and I'm crushing it and everything, and it's always doing something how I can like expand the business. So do you have any support? How's about your parents or... Nah, it's just me. I guess you as your friends here supporting you. I got uh, my friend right there, but he's a little camera shy. And me and Sergio are friends too. We play soccer together sometimes. Yeah, Sergio's wearing your And hat. he's rocking a hat that he paid yeah, full price for. He's rocking a hat. You look good in that hat, Sergio. Full <laughs> price, he said. <laughs> no, we support. It's pretty fresh. Yeah. Not going to lie. The fun part is that, that you know, they, they grew up playing soccer as kids in in middle school and they're still playing soccer they still he goes out all the time and i think it's so cool that they're still you know doing sports you gotta stay active <laughs> yeah no it's definitely a passion of ours too yeah i'm just so much better than sergio at soccer though oh! <laughs> <laughs> that's why i get picked first huh? <laughs> you can have all of this information at your fingertips on the internet, which is not something that my generation had when we were growing up. Yeah. Um, and I just love how, you know, that has influenced your attitude mm -hmm. to life, that you have this information and you're just not letting it pass by. Yeah. You're thinking, I'm going to use this and I'm going to make myself a better person mm -hmm. using this information. I'm going to make the world a better place exactly. using this information. Yeah, because I feel like you just got to be open minded with stuff. Cause even if this is working for right now, Maybe five years in the future, it wouldn't be working. So you just got to be adaptive. And like the internet and stuff like that makes it so easy to keep in touch with it. I feel like once you kind of get out of touch, it's harder to keep up. But when you're in the circle, you're in the circle. So, thing, sorry. Go ahead. I would say one, one thing too that's like interesting is I feel like the internet has gotten such a bad rap and technology has. And 
but nobody talks about like the positive things because like being able to start a brand and market to millions of people with a low budget is something new. It's something yeah. that our generation is exactly. able to do now. And it, it wasn't a thing before, and, but nobody talks about that. Everyone's like, oh, Instagram's horrible, no. you know, but there are, you know, it's just how the user kind of decides. To if use you it. use it for business purposes and you really put it out there, because that's what we, you know, this is the conversation we're having, Nandini, about what's the difference between marketing and promotion. Marketing is figuring out what you want to do. What he did is his marketing. He did his research, you know, material, all of that. That's the marketing. Now he needs to get in your face. Yeah, and where exactly. do you do that? You gotta That's do what that, I'm doing. I'll right? be wearing some of my Social socks. Media is the I'll best go to way. random people and be like, hey, you like these socks? And I'm like, oh my God, they're so cool. I was like, I made them. <laughs> so, like, Want to buy them? Or even like to the gym. So I have shirts coming in. I'm about to do a photo shoot. So there are these people like just crushing it in the gym, like sweating, going as hard as they can. And I'll just lift up the weight and I'm like, yo, I have a photo shoot to do. You guys want to be a part of it? So just kind of like being not afraid to talk to people and yeah. kind of breaking that barrier. They're more okay, cool, and I feel like when you go up to them and they're in the beginning stages of it, they kind of feel like them themselves are part of a brand, which they're not, it's just me, but <laughs> they feel more know. supportive and they want to share it on their stories and they want to tell their friends about it too. Right, but that's brand loyalty. That's, that's yeah. something that like is taught, you know, as, as like a concept, as a theory is, is you know, if you're loyal to a brand, they, you could get a product that's bad. You know, one of your socks would come out bad. Yeah. Like, people are like, love your brand, they're like, whatever. You know, the next one is good. And like, that, that kind of stuff helps out, you mm -hmm. know? And I, I don't know, I don't know if you like agree, but I feel like that should be something that schools start to incorporate is like, Thank you. you know, business and, and, and marketing and stuff like that through social media and the yeah. internet. Because we don't learn any of that kind of stuff in that's school. Exactly. You know? Well, the education system hasn't kept up yeah. with how trends are, are changing. And I just, I just love how, you know, you recognize that you have that access to the world. Yeah. And it doesn't phase you. Mm -mm. You use it as something to grow. You know, that's just so wonderful. Yeah, you just gotta believe in yourself. And the only thing is you have to be able to sacrifice stuff for it. Like yesterday, me, it was late night. My friends wanted to start this new anime. I wanna watch it, but while they're watching it, I'm just like on it and I'm like 50% in that, but I'm 100% in my business. So it's just always being able to do it. You're still doing your life and you're still going through the motions of life. But at the end, like this is what matters to you the most. And knowing that you're gonna succeed, that's the biggest part. Like, there's no doubt in my mind. You get what I'm saying? So yep. That's really yep. it. All right, so we're going to take a little break right now. We're going to take a little commercial break, and we'll be right back. See you soon. And we're back. So I, we're doing a little shifting around. Alex had to leave. So thank you, Alex. Mwah. Thank you, Alex. Um, and we had someone else. The light is in my face. I can't even see who's sitting over here anymore. Who do we have, Sergio? Oh no, we're right here. We're oh, gonna, we're gonna take it right here. Again, you gotta remind me. How does it go? It's okay. It's Trisna. Trisna. We have Trisna with her us, and today is her first day working at the Brooklyn Cafe Show, correct? Mm -hmm. And she can't believe it because she's already in a show. So tell us, how did you get it? What where school did you go to? What your your um, what are you studying? And what does this is you know help you with your career? Um, so I'm actually originally from Arizona. Um, I moved out here about two years ago. I went to ASU. I studied psychology with a dance minor. Um, I ended up having to drop out, you know, financial and personal issues. Um, but then eventually I Mike, my, lift the mic, please. Eventually I made my way up here to Florida. And um, I actually work at Houston's as a server right now. And I met a, another gentleman who also has a show here. And he introduced me to Here you are, and it's fun already, right? <laughs> it's been a hectic day, but it's been a move. Okay, so. so do you have both jobs, or is this part-time? Uh, no, I still have both jobs. Like, this is my first day, but this is just an internship that I'm doing for now just to advance, like, my path in the career that I want to choose or, like, go on. Um, but I do serve on the side as of right now. So what's, what's that career path you're thinking of? Um, well, I would love to be in the industry. Um, what I really do want to do is model, um, but I'm very open to anything. I also, like I said, I'm a dancer, so dance is like a huge, huge passion of mine, um, and that would be something that I would love to do for the rest of my life. I was a dancer, and I did two shows every night and loved every second of it. And then I became a dance teacher and had my own dance studio, 
And I made him take ballet classes. <laughs> tap classes also. And tap classes and <laughs> Not jazz. Not just ballet. <laughs> he was very okay. happy, but he, at one point he was like the only boy in the, in the ballet class because we had all girls and he's the only boy and he was not happy. <laughs> but guess what? <laughs> then he went to college and they had an audition and he auditioned, which shocked me, but he auditioned did, yeah. and he got chosen because he had the basic. He was like, I know the plies and tondues. <laughs> I was like, you see, it sinks in. So he has, they have some basic dance. Oh but yeah. Yeah. It definitely helped me in, in life. Like uh, just even just like flexibility though, like going to the gym or like playing soccer, like even I'm not, I know I'm not going to say I'm old, but I'm getting older <laughs> and I'm already a lot of my friends are not as flexible as, you know, they used to be as kids. So I think definitely helped so uh, me and life in general. No, absolutely. And I mean, like with the flexibility, they say dancing, especially ballet helps with like sports, which is why they say like football yeah. players should do it and everything. So no, I'm sure that definitely advanced you in your sport. In my soccer? Yeah, for sure. Even though Dylan says you're not as good as him, but. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> you can see who gets picked first. <laughs> <laughs> One topic that I'd really like to explore with you guys is, you know, you're at that age now where you're finding your feet in the world, you know, figuring out exactly what it is you want to do. Um, but how far into the future are you thinking uh, financially? Like when you make decisions now, are you thinking about where am I going to be in 20, 30 years? Am I going to be financially stable? You know, do you have the opportunity or even the drive to be thinking along those lines right now? Or are you still just trying to figure out exactly what it is you want to do? Yeah, no, absolutely. So for me, I am actually still figuring out exactly what I want to do. And I think that finding a career that you want to stick with for the rest of your life is a really hard thing to do. And like for your guys' generation, I know that that's something that was instilled in you is to like you were supposed to go to school you're supposed to go to college get your degree and then you have your career that you were set for and even though that is something that still people do today i with um this millennial generation like it is a lot harder because we do want to do so many things we know that we are capable of more than just that one thing and we want to be successful in all of those areas because you know if that's what works for you you want to be happy and fulfill each one of those areas that you're trying to fulfill you know so personally like no i'm not thinking about 20 30 years in the future and it's something i should be doing i obviously want to be financially stable and but that's also worrying about being financially stable right now you know and like with the pandemic and um like this inflation and everything going up the job that i had before serving I was not financially stable with, especially with the big move, moving from state to state, I almost didn't make it. I had like support here that definitely helped, but I never wanted to serve. It was not something I ever wanted to do, but I had to put myself out there mm -hmm. and it's definitely put me in a better position than I had been for the last two years. So I am very grateful for that. I think the challenges that you guys have had to go through with the pandemic and everything, you know, my generation, we never experienced anything like that that was so life changing mm -hmm. um you know and you're using it to your benefit you're learning from it and you're making the changes that are necessary i don't know if anybody i want i want to hear what you guys have to say about the same topic about being financially um you know are you thinking that far ahead or right now you're just thinking we got to survive and make it work now okay what was it again i'm sorry Go ahead, Nandini, stable? ask the question. Yeah, well, are you thinking 20, 30 years ahead? I know you've got a very good brain on, uh, you know, a very good head on your shoulders, and you're thinking about making this um, enterprise as successful as you can be. Yeah. Um, you know, what are your thoughts on where you are in 20, 30 years down the line financially? You know, because in my generation, we were not taught this. Mm -hmm. You know, we, as, you know, as Trishna was just saying, we were conditioned to believe that you study, you get a job, and then you retire, yeah. and that's it. That paradigm has shifted so mm -hmm. much for you guys. And I'm just thinking, my questions are, are you making investments? How do you choose what investments you make? 
Are you speaking to your parents about this, or who are you speaking to? You know, what are your reference points? It's just a lot about like you just got to read on stuff. So I don't know if you guys know what Dogecoin is, but I saw it and I just thought it was funny. So in like, so with stocks and crypto and everything, you can get them super cheap. And if you follow Reddit, there's like these like Reddit articles, and you could just read them. So it was at like point oh two, like not even a penny yet. So I was like, what's four hundred bucks? So I just threw it in. I took a chance. And then it was like at 65 cents. And I'm like, this right. is so easy. So <laughs> it's just, at the end, I feel like as long, obviously I like invest, like I want to buy houses and stuff, but there's other ways that they don't tell you how you can get houses and everything. Like you could, no, I can't say any financial advice here, but you can, um, <laughs> you could just invest in certain things. And if you buy like a house, like a bigger house with a little bedroom in the back and you live in that bedroom and you rent the house out, that's another way to like, you can make rent for free. So it's just certain things like that, just being aware of everything and kind of like looking at certain things. That's why I kind of feel like the internet might help a lot in that because there's certain things where you wouldn't have, you know, the ability to research that we can. And also it's just what you use it for. So people will be like, oh, TikTok's super bad or Instagram's super bad. It depends on what you follow. So there's a lot of investment stuff that I follow and it's just, I don't know, it works out for the most part. You just have to keep on like what i said earlier you have to keep reading because things change every day so you're making a very good point about how my generation can learn from you guys mm -hmm. because you know for a lot of us social media is intimidating mm -hmm. and as you say you know it, it gets a, a very bad rap you know and but you make a very good point it's how you use it yeah. so i'm saying you have something to teach us mm -hmm. What else do you think that our generation can learn from you? Um, that's because I feel like we can always learn from other people as well. It's just not a certain generation. It's a person because you could teach me something that someone younger than me can't teach me. And I could teach you something that someone older than you can't teach me either. I think it depends more on the person and just being more open minded in what you see. So like people see generation as a whole, but not just as like one individual. You get what I'm saying? Cause like, I told someone once, cause they were talking about school and they were really big on school and I'm like, I'm going to college. And I'm kind of like, mm, that's, that was never my plan. But I said, I feel like eight out of 10 times at least, I would get the job over someone like that just because how I am in interviews. And I feel like that matters a little more. And of course, if you want to be a doctor or you want to go to school to study medicine and stuff, you could definitely be that. But I have a friend who went to college for a day. He said, nah, this isn't it. And then he did real estate and he learned himself, just betting on himself. And he, there's months that he looks at me and he goes, bro, I made what a doctor makes in a year and a month. So it's just <laughs> certain things like that and not letting money kind of run your life. Nice. If you believe, if you have no like care about money and you're like, you don't worry about it. Obviously you have bills to pay and it's gonna be in your subconscious. But if you genuinely believe at the end of the day, I'm gonna be fine. It'll come to you. That, that's not legal advice. Don't take that advice. <laughs> but it's just, no, that's I manifestation. Like, that's manifestation. Like, yeah. So it's just, <laughs> like, it. just betting on yourself 100% yeah. of the time. Just to continue on that, I think just having motivation is like a huge factor in that because a lot of our generation today, it's like a 50-50 thing where they're unmotivated. And then like for Dylan, he's extremely motivated. He's very motivated. You know, and like... I think that you've gone far because you do believe in yourself and you do motivate yourself and that discipline that you have on yourself versus me, I'm honestly struggled. I'm old, probably older than you. And nah, I'm old. <laughs> how old are you? I'm 29. Okay, I'm 26. Yeah. Okay, so you're older. So but um, just like I have been unmotivated in my life and like I haven't always had that support. So I have been alone for a lot of that, you know? But with that, there is, a, I, I'm pretty sure it's Einstein. He said, if you judge a fish on its ability to climb a tree, it'll think like it's stupid for its whole life. So Ow. it's just, if I'm gonna say you're unmotivated for stuff that you wanna do, and I kinda looked at school and I'm like, damn, yeah, I don't really wanna do that. But I was able to like focus all that energy into something I love, and it just comes natural, yeah. then I'm gonna appear more like motivated. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Like it's kinda like if I told Sergio, hey, Facts. you gotta work a grill for five hours, or we're gonna play soccer for five hours. He's gonna be like, ah, oh, either way, Dylan's gonna sauce me up. But <laughs> okay. is it, you're going to be more motivated to play soccer and do something you love. So I think at the end of the day, just find what you love and then just go with it. 
you get what I'm saying? No. I don't want to be 100 years old to have a pillow. So I wanted, uh, what I wanted to say is because in our house growing up, uh, his dad is was very into money, investing, you know, accumulating funds and, and the, the whole, you know, financial freedom. And I think he even got you guys investing and even since they were kids i started a bank account for them they always had a bank account we always had money they always knew there was a way of getting money but later on dad actually helped them set up with investments and sit there and teach them and watch the stock market and this and that and so what what do you say about that you think that's a good lesson yeah no he home? definitely taught me a lesson us me and my sister lessons that a lot a lot of kids don't get you know i have friends that are 25 just uh getting their first credit cards when he opened one for me i don't even think i turned 18 yet i think i think honestly we lied about the age i got it before i turned 18. so like just building credit since like i was young like since i was able to and, and then the and investing he explains and stuff. it he goes oh, yeah. you get you just spend a little bit and you pay it off and you spend a little bit and you pay it off and that's how you start building credit oh, yeah. but no one tells this the kids get a credit card and they overspend and then they're in debt for the rest of the well, because nobody taught them and then because no one yeah, taught exactly. them how to build so he's so it's amazing because believe me no credit cards come to the house every day and he's like no because the more credit cards mean the more value that means your credit score people right. don't understand yeah, every time don't, so don't because he had the lesson cards. he'd be like throw right. it out that's all trash just this is it this is what i work with i spend i pay and uh, he has amazing credit scores at this age which is very few adults could say that and right? i think yeah. that circles back around to when we were talking about with alex about um just oh my gosh i lost my train of thought there Ooh, um <laughs> just like what we learn in height like school and like what they don't teach us in school and what we need in the real world like they definitely should have taught us like taxes and like credit and like of like course. entrepreneur definitely. stuff yeah, and yeah. like having that in high school and not just in college because like i shouldn't have to go to college when i probably have already had a job my senior year of high school and i have to pay taxes and now i don't even know how to fill that that form right. you know what i mean I'm, and especially as entrepreneurs definitely. that's a whole different tax back bracket so oh, it's like you're you're up. on a whole different even like spectrum you know right. what i mean and that's like why aren't we teaching kids well, this? What I, what I definitely want to share here is I grew up in Aruba. And Aruba is the European Dutch system. And we learned all of that. We did accounting, bookkeeping, taxes, mortgage, amortization, all of that. And that was in like high school, like junior high. And then I came to college in the U.S. And I thought, what are you guys teaching me? I already did this in high school. Why are you guys so behind? And then when I brought them to the U.S. to come to school here, and I left, you know, they grew up in Turks and Caicos Islands, which is, again, British, very different schooling system again. Then we come here, and I'm, and I'm like, you're not teaching them nothing. They're spending hours. I'm like, oh, don't get yeah, me started definitely, with the school system At here. least uh, in, like, math-wise, I was doing, like, sixth grade here, like, third grade over there. Definitely. Yes. It was just, it's just amazing how different but it is. Um, I want to give two seconds. I want to give a chance for um, Arthur to, because Arthur, I'm sorry, I'm throwing you in under the, the roof right now. And um, because you wrote a book based on, and we were, t you were talking earlier in the show earlier about how kids, um, you know what, go ahead, because I kind of came in at the end, but tell us about the book and how you're trying to reach this generation as well uh, well first of all I am an entrepreneur and I have been most of my life although I've worked for companies and I've been at the CEO level of companies as well but I like entrepreneurship I like where you're going with that and I think you have a great shoulders Thank you, but especially that the motivation part but one of the things that I st struggled with growing up was uh, attitude and relationships and I realize we're talking about business. I can talk about business all day, but I want to switch subjects just for a minute because my books that I write about now are about relationships. And relationships are not just important. You might think of your relationship with your significant other, right? Your something like that, but your relationships with everybody counts. Your relationship with your friends and your family and your coworkers and everything. All of those relationships count 
hundred percent. So I like to talk about how do you how are you treating them, and how are you treating yourself? Because it's in what I talk about is an inside job. It's not anything that comes from without outside of you. It's always inside job. How do you feel about yourself? Do you care about yourself? Do you love yourself? Are you kind to yourself? I also talk about being kind to other people. But yeah, it's a two-way street, right? It's you be kind to yourself and, you, and you're kind to other people, kindness comes back to you. If you love yourself and you love other people, love comes back to you. If you're compassionate with other people and you're compassionate with yourself, all of these things, it's a two-way street all the time with all the virtues. So I don't want anybody to lose themselves just in business because there's another part of your life that will contribute to your having great business through great relationships. I like, I like that you brought it Definitely. up, Arthur, because like I said, you know, watching my own kids going through, you know, one minute they have this friend and then all of a sudden if that friendship doesn't work out and, you know, and, there's this, and this is that age where they're finding themselves and then that's also where friendship, you know, they either last or they don't last, it falls apart. And you know what is that that makes you decide? You know what um, we haven't heard <laughs> like this. You know, so what is it for you guys and the relationship? And what do you? What's important for you in relationship at this point? Um, well, I mean, relationships in general are important, no matter whether that's a partnership, a friendship, or your family. Um, for me, it's really hard. That's a really hard question for me, actually. Um, I don't really talk to my family. Um, we don't really have a relationship, and it was because I had to make a stand for myself. I was not, you know, getting what I deserved, you know, I reciprocation, like that matters. It's definitely a two-way street, like Arthur said, like you have, like as much as you put out, not everyone's gonna be able to give back to you and you have to be able to stand up for yourself and be like, I'm enough and I deserve more. Yes. And you're not reciprocating the love or care and respect that I'm giving to you, regardless that you're my parent, you're a parent, you should, Wow. be giving that to your child and they you know if that's just the case and even friendships you know like sometimes you put in a lot of effort in your friendship and your friend's just like oh like oh i'm just gonna vent to you when it's right for me like i'm yeah. sorry i don't have time for you but do you have time for me you know it's like mm, well if you don't have the time for me why would i make the time for you and that's about also loving yourself and like Yay. taking that span that stand and res having wow. that respect for yourself so glad you, you said know? that yeah me, before the show we were yeah. talking about boundaries mm -hmm. um you know and how your generation you're able to set those boundaries without even thinking about it mm -hmm. whereas we were conditioned to think completely differently that so we, we had were, to be we were meant to be seen and not heard yeah we had to yep. shut up and so. we need to be available for everyone correct mm -hmm. you know if you were not available for everyone you were being rude you were being selfish it's just so wonderful that you are so empowered to understand that in having your boundaries you are not selfish you are practicing self-love yeah and in practicing that self-love you're then able to express love to others in your life and that comes back to Arthur's points about I, I just want to add something to that because this is a very sticky part of life mm -hmm. I'll call it uh, you mentioned that you know if you don't have time for me I don't have time for you I'm gonna push back on that a little bit yeah. because this is the part where yes you want to protect yourself and you want to be whole in yourself and you want to love yourself especially with family well I, actually with everybody yeah. you can still be kind no, absolutely you, you don't have you can walk away from that relationship in a sense right you can distance yourself from the relationship but always remember that first of all I say that your foundation needs to be one of love mm -hmm. if you're building a house that foundation is love Absolutely. And, come, and from that comes kindness. Mm -hmm. And then after kindness comes all the other virtues that go with it. So I I'm just want people to be cognizant of the fact that, yes, you want to protect yourself and you want to be cared for. But if somebody doesn't do that, you can just distance yourself but still be kind to them. Yeah. You don't yeah. have to do to them what they're doing to you. No, That's absolutely. all I'm saying. No, and I definitely agree with the whole foundation of yeah. love and kindness. And it's not that I don't have like love, care, respect for my family, but I, 
at some point because I do love myself enough, mm -hmm. I have to love them from a distance. It's yes. not like that I don't love yeah. them. You know, I'm just like. I'm sorry, I wasn't accusing you of doing that. Yeah, exactly. I was just making a point. No, yeah, and I'm just not. I'm just all. agreeing and saying more on that. <laughs> and you know what, <laughs> just, just so you know, I've been through the same thing. You know, he left the house at one point. My mm -hmm. daughter left the house at one point. You know, we didn't talk for a while at one point. And my job was just to be patient and be supportive. And whenever they're ready to come back, I was there. Um, that's, you know, I said to them, once to reach a certain age, I did my job. I gave you your clothing, your education, your housing, food, everything. Now I hope I gave you enough foundation to go on and make the right decisions in life. And that's my job moving forward. Now I'm just a support system. I'm not here now to control and tell them what to do anymore. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think that a parent, a lot of parents, um, especially in like parents that are around like my age now or like only a few years older than me, than me, like don't like they hold that over their kid. It's like I didn't ask for you to bring me into this world, but you hold. Oh, I gave you a roof. I gave you food yes. and clothes all the, all the time, right? Uh, and it just—it's like, why uh, are really? you putting me yeah, down? Like, like, I brought you into this world. I was like, I didn't ask. Right, yeah. I, I didn't. To me, I didn't ask wow. for this, you yeah. know. Like you wanted me, you chose to be a parent. Correct. You have to provide. You have to like play that parent role. And then we need to and, release you and let you go. And not yeah. make us feel bad for being your kid. And so, right. you know, like. <laughs> yeah. I don't feel bad, mom. Yeah, you don't want to live like that. Dope. <laughs> but not. Nah, with saying that too, what you guys are kind of talking on, I feel like. At first, and also what I'm looking for in people is you have to love yourself first. You mm -hmm. gotta be number one by like a little distance. Like, I gotta like love you, and then like whoever's next, you know. So, people who love themselves, I feel like you just naturally like bind to, and you just naturally like connect to like that. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like once you have friendships like that, if you're having a bad day, that's okay. I understand. Or like those friends that you don't have to talk to forever, but then you can still talk to and like still be like besties with them. Yeah. That's cool too. So it's just like at the end of the day, as, while you're putting yourself first, all like that stupid stuff that happens in friendship, because it's a relationship, like obviously like that happens. It just, you're on your own path. You're focused on what you're doing. That doesn't matter as much. And yeah. like, since you're like, if you treat people like how you like genuinely want to be treated and you're just nice and everything, yeah. It just that energy is what you attract, so that energy like comes around you. Like the other day, I looked at my friend and I was like, "Yo, I want to get some bole, but I ain't gonna pay for it. I'm not gonna steal it. I'm a thief." But I was <laughs> like, I just feel like I'm not gonna pay for it today. And then I went, and then the guy there knew me, the manager, so he paid for it and he gave me six free cards. So I handed out all of them, but I kept one. So I went <laughs> yesterday to use my another free card. And then the I, bro, I swear this the other register guy was like I'm gonna give you another free card so I was like this is unlimited bole I cheated the system <laughs> I saw this guy and he was outside and he was so hungry and I didn't have like my wallet because I had the card I was like bro just take it yeah. so like that energy you just kind of like put it out and then it comes back that's the law of attraction baby me personally attraction like yeah I agree with that mom. just like be just be kind be kind to people whoever you meet no you're never gonna know yeah. And don't be afraid to say no to certain stuff. Like, even Thank if it's, like, you. hanging out with your best friends. If, like, you're doing something, and, like, when I was uh, learning how to, like, make the clothing, my friend came from, he came up, and he wanted to hang out with a couple of people, and I was like, no. Like, I have to do this. But it's not because <laughs> I don't like you. It's because I have to do stuff for myself. Well, my girlfriend says no is a full sentence. <laughs> and on that note, we're coming to the end of the show. I hope you guys enjoyed uh to know what's happening with this age group and to be i'm actually very excited to hear what came out today and to see how level-headed you guys are and how like committed you know and they're they're going i mean they got businesses they got money invested she's on her path and and taking control of her life and you know i appreciate all of you and, and what you guys are not seeing is the crew that's working on the backside the ones that's in in the, in the um, computer room, the guys back here behind the cameras, they're doing such an amazing job. I mean, I've been here, this is our fourth show now, right, Nandini? And like anything, I can turn to them with anything and they are amazing. So thank you guys so much. And thank you to my guests today. Love you guys so much. And I hope to see you again at our next Millennium Show, which is the last Tuesday of the month. And for all the other friends that didn't make it today, hope to see you then. Bye guys. Bye guys.